Well, so let's dive in and uh, and introduce everyone to you. I feel like you and I have circulated around each other, uh, circled around each other a bit in this menopause space, and it's the space is getting bigger, but it's still a small space at this point of people that really want to shift the conversation and change this narrative about menopause. It's amazing, isn't it? I feel like when we first started, it was I was sort of almost whispering as excited I was to start talking about menopause, like, yeah. well, I want to do something about menopause, and now I feel like everyone's talking about menopause which is still, yeah. it is a small world, but everyone in my circle now is, can't stop talking about it, which is great news for everyone. Well, I think, I don't know, maybe even two years ago, it was the most unsexy word you could probably say. And um, that's that's really changed. And I think that's remarkable in such a short amount of time. But you have a, an interesting story. And I feel like uh, just you know, somebody coming from journalism and coming uh, from an industry where you're used to storytelling and interviewing, you really shifted gears. So can you tell people uh, about you and also about Alloy? Sure. Um, well, really quickly, I was um, editor-in-chief of my high school newspaper and sort of kept on that same trajectory until a few years ago, um, ending up as editor-in-chief of Marie Claire magazine um, for seven years, which was a phenomenal, wonderful experience, great job. Um, but towards the end of my time there, towards the end of um, sort of 20, around 2017, 2018, a couple of things happened. One is we were covering a lot of female entrepreneurs. That was a really wonderful area of coverage for us. And I was more and more inspired by these amazing women who were disrupting industries and creating new businesses businesses. Um, it was just they were operating in such a world of possibility and I was really mm -hmm. inspired by them. Um, and then on the home front, my daughter was experiencing some health issues. She's fine now. Um, and then all of a sudden my mother died at um, just of a heart attack out of the blue. And that all sort of conspired to make me sit and think about, well, what do I how do I want to spend the rest of my life and what do I want to do? And, you know, you're sort of sitting there in my mother's kitchen with her entire community around me and um, just thought, you know, I've been going so fast from point A to point B to point C. Um, and I just had a moment of kind of, you know, it's obviously a tragedy, but it was also a moment to reflect and think about how do sort of, how did I want to be more intentional about my life? Um, and so I just started looking for different ways. I wanted to make it more of a, a direct impact in women's lives and um, got really interested in women's health and just started kind of talking to lots of different people. I went and explored the nonprofit world. I spoke with, um, gosh, so many sort of kind of took any meeting that came my way in a way of sort of like opening myself up to the possibility of change. And um, met a good friend named Monica Molinar and then quickly thereafter met someone who was interested in funding a menopause company and it was kind of um, you know a bit serendipitous and, and a lot of hard work uh, and so we started alloy.com which are the website is myalloy.com but alloy women's health um, focusing on women's health after 40 really beginning with the symptoms of menopause it's digital it's online we you know do the diet you're sort of you go through a Q&A and you answer questions and then our menopause trained doctors review and then we just they decide what to send you and they send you a, a beautiful little pouch of medications and support um, and it's all anchored with our chief medical officer Sharon Malone who we discovered on a podcast um, she yes. was actually speaking with her good friend Michelle Obama and they were talking about hot flashes on Air Force One and menopause and why there's so much confusion around it and we just sort of fell in love and, and tracked her down and, and got her to be our, our founding medical chief medical officer so it's been a, I mean, a wild ride I, I think it's incredible I think your story is equally incredible though you know I and, and I think I um, I relate to it a lot because I've just spent my whole life telling stories and it wasn't until I hit this space and I really realized what is important in terms of you know how you live your your next whatever it is 50 50 years we hope right and um, mm -hmm. I, I lost my mother early and that that put health on my radar but perhaps not as um, as clear as you know when I turned the age my mother was when she died which was 51 years old and um, I had gone through menopause you know, it started a few years ago and it scared me and it, it woke me up a bit and I feel like that's kind of where we all are right now but I think that you know my goal at this point is to teach women how to thrive during it not fear it and women who are not in it yet you know, like you know you know don't know what to expect and you're helping them get there and are there some stories in particular that you say every day I have to imagine you hear that you say this is why I'm here and this is why we're doing this you know it's been um such an incredible journey I feel like I'm learning something every day I feel like yeah. I can feel the brain synapses sort of firing in my brain in a different way than they did for for my 25-year career in journalism um but we've recently started hosting these support groups on Revel which is a, a a community of women over 40 um, and we're just opening them up to like 15 to 25 women and we do them weekly on Tuesdays and we I just listen to people's stories and it is mm -hmm. unbelievable to me you know two 
a woman how much misinformation is out there, how many women are suffering needlessly, how many women are going in search of help and being told the wrong things and and really, you know, people in tears and people so uncomfortable and also, you know, as you know, um, if you do are, are able to get on the right treatment, you can also be very um, preventative about all the things that you, know, you can really sort of shape your, your old age. You can really sort of, as much as we, any of us can control anything, sure. you can really, um, if you are able to go on hormone therapy, um, which most women are, which is, there's a myth that it's dangerous, it's, you yeah. know, well, well, as well as I do, um, that you're able to prevent, you know, serious uh, health issues that that women deal with, like my mother had a heart attack, so prevent, it's protective of your heart, your brain, and your bones, and those three are three things that really um, can plague us as we get older. I mean, really, you know, there's one thing living to be a certain age, but you have to do it living well, because what's the point? You know, if you're if you're struggling and suffering and for people like you and I who have seen people go through health issues, you, you know what that's like. And that's, that's not, you know, that was not where you want to be or what you want to see for people that you care about. Uh, my alloy or well, alloy and it's my alloy dot com. We'll make sure we have all the links down below. What you. are you do you have you have the team of doctors? And, and it was interesting because on, on the podcast uh, before this, a few weeks ago, we talked with uh, Dr. Malone, and we talked about the fact that we're 20 years behind when it comes to hormone therapy and figuring this out in that 2002 study and what needs to happen and what responsibility that, you know, we all have to make sure that that the right information gets out there. What do you think is the biggest piece of misinformation that you're hearing right now? Um, can I have two answers to that? One yeah. is that, <laughs> Only one. that it's, there's some sort of honor or, um, uh, I don't know, that, that there's some sort of good thing about suffering through there's mm-hmm. nothing a badge good of honor almost, right. yes women do not need to suffer through this and and if they don't take care of it then it can get worse and worse it's progressive um and then of course there's the the this idea that was put out there 20 years ago um that hormone therapy is dangerous and that it causes mm-hmm. breast cancer or other mm-hmm. health problems and while there are some small risks um as you know very well the you know the estrogen alone has no and I'm not a doctor, but has only sort of there's no risk of breast cancer. And then just a month ago, a study came out that really um, hammered home the idea that, or the the point that natural um, micronized progesterone, which is the progesterone most people take now when they're when they're on right. estrogen, um, if they have a uterus, uh, there's no risk of breast cancer either. So just 20 years of women suffering, thinking they can't have this very easily um, prescribed and accessible. Um, medication is just has caused so many health issues if um I do too. not to be in sort of i don't know my 30s or my 40s anymore I, I it's funny it's it's almost hard to explain unless somebody's started to go through it and and sees it because there's such this there's such a sphere of like i've got to i've got to i've got to and then i'm going to do that other thing someday and we're in our someday right now and so yes. i keep hearing myself say to myself like live your someday today and i and it's it's a scary thing and i and i think also um you know, part part of your story is about that change and about that pivot, and I found that really interesting about you because it's it's frightening to leave behind you know a career or tr- a tra- not leave behind but transition from a career of 25 years that you're very clear of what you do every day when you go in and how to do it and who to talk to and how to do the interviews and how to, you know you knew how to do that I'm sure with your with your eyes closed and this is a whole other you know this is a whole other challenge but like you said it's opened your brain up in terms of of things you had not thought of how did you get from uh, A to B because I think that that's another part of this time in everyone's life. I don't think you can separate menopause and midlife and finding meaning. I think that they all go together. So how did you um, hurdle that? How did you get to that next place or was it just trial and error? No, I think it's funny because I was listening to one of your um, interviews, the one with Martha back uh, last night as I was preparing and I I was so um, moved by what she said about sort of facing the uncomfortableness and, and, you know, what is necessary for growth. And I think, um, honestly, obviously I had this horrible sort of just, my mother died, had a dinner party at her house one night and then, um, died the next day. So just the shock, right. I'm just, of course it stops you in your tracks. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Cause I, I'm sorry about your mom too, Tamsa. It's something, you know, that sadly everyone will go through. Um, but, uh, but it, and it, it was of course a tragedy, but it really did, um, it is, was also a bit of a blessing because it gave me this moment to stop in my tracks and sort of think like, wait, what, what's, what am I doing? Um, and then the other piece of it really is that I think there was just something that maybe it's the age, maybe it's, I just really was ready for a change. So, um, it almost like everyone's like, Oh, you're so brave. It was such a risk. And at the time it felt like an extremely necessary, very obvious 
thing that yeah. I had to do. So in fact, you know, looking back, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was kind of a, a, a 180 <laughs> or a, maybe a little risky. To do a I was very and, bold. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, I just like, I just, you couldn't have kept me from doing it. I just, mm-hmm. um, I think as we, as we get older and you have experiences and you um, do kind of think about you know, wow, I think as a woman and as a working mom, but really all women, you sort of life comes at you and you yeah. kind of feel like more and more you're sort of dodging the the bullets or, or just the sort of the obstacles or sort of you're just at your, the first half of my life. I think I was so reactive and had to be. And sure. um, I just had this urge to really be more proactive and intentional. And I'm sure it had something to do also with like, oh, OK, wait a minute now. I may not have that much more time left, and what do I want to do with the rest of my life? I mean, it's that Mary Oliver poem, "What will you do with your one precious life?" or something. It just, yeah. I think it was open to the to the message of change, and I, um, I guess, took the leap. But at the time, it just felt like the only way forward. I, I love it. I, I love it because I, I know it's a it's 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 frightening and exciting at the same time. But I, I like the fact that your leap um, turned into something that is helping and touching so many women. So talk a little bit about Alloy and how it works for people that are just learning about it. Because I think what I've seen, um, you know, I went on TikTok about maybe it's been four or five months now, and an unlikely platform I would say for menopause, or so I thought, and. Um, it has just been incredible, the response that I've gotten, because I, I've always been you know, the, the news anchor that you see you know, at night when you turn on your TV and the makeup's on and the last on. And on TikTok, I've, I felt like it was just free. <laughs> it was just a free for all <laughs> to do whatever I wanted. <laughs> and also to be really honest, not, not in terms of looks, but in terms of what was coming out of my mouth and it was unscripted and it's you know, it just you know, what I was feeling and thinking. And for your news anchor to be talking about going through menopause, like that's not that's not hot, no pun intended. It's just not, it's not a sexy thing to picture when, you know, they're, they're reading the news, but, but I really felt it was a duty at some point specifically because of that, because of the reaction that I was getting from people thanking me for just talking about that openly and not, and not being afraid to do it, which I was afraid to do it at first. Honestly, I was thinking if my bosses see me talking about menopause, am I going to get like, are they going to think that I should be doing this job anymore? But I, you know, I, I had a hot flash and a panic attack, anxiety attack, whatever you call it, um, during a live broadcast and landed on the floor mm-hmm. in the bathroom. And it, it shook me. It, it shook me. It, maybe it did, you know, what you're talking about saying like, wow, how much longer do I have? You know, what, what is this that I didn't control? And, um, and not knowing what it was. And, and it scared me. But to, I'm, I'm so encouraged now to see people coming forward, talking about it, talking on, you know, on social media about it. And, um, you know, there's so many questions that I know you're answering at um, Alloy. So how do, how do you go through the process when you get onto the website? Um, well, first of all, I, you have also been extremely brave and I should I just thank you so much for what you're oh, doing and for having you. these conversations and making the documentary and your TikTok is fantastic. We have also oh, just started you. on TikTok. I do think there's something liberating about TikTok coming yeah. from, as I come from this very high production photo shoots, yeah. uh, hair, makeup world. Slick, um, sleek, and Instagram right? is a little bit like that as well, right? It's sort of <laughs> curated so and beautiful <laughs> and like everyone's you know done a little editing Perfect. or a lot of editing, um, whereas TikTok is just sort of there's something so quick and ethereal, ethereal about it that you do feel so liberated and and um, and it's been wonderful. We've had a great response on TikTok as well, and we're trying to do more of those. Um, and it's been fun, and so it's great to see. And there's, there there apparently are a lot of us on TikTok because yeah. Bobby Brown, who's an advisor to Alloy, did a quick TikTok about how to put makeup on in your 50s. And I mean, the whole thing was must have been like eight or nine seconds, and yeah. it just exploded on. TikTok and we were like, ah, oh, I guess our, our I guess our women are on TikTok, so we hopped on yeah, as well. They are. Um, they are. And we're doing more. And actually today, I think today, maybe tomorrow, um, we are launching sort of a, a more magazine like content center at myalloy.com. Um, okay. And so one of the things that we are doing there is just having this more frank and frankly funny and open, honest conversation. We have stories like um, coming up. There's one about um, is the vagina the new face <laughs> because of all of the. Yeah. Um, beauty products that creams are and products and <laughs> yes exactly um and then we also just have some fun sort of like there's one called um sort of TikTok got my groove back and sort of just you know treating this area of life the way we used to treat women in their 20s and 30s at magazines which right. is just being right. frank and open and funny and sort of real. commiserating and, and real so um but the main point of alloy my alloy.com is that you come you take a three-minute assessment about your symptoms and how you're feeling um we sort of try to be as frank and open and honest we, we talk we sort of talk about the fact that we have real talk so even our assessment is quite quick to the point 
no BS. Um, and then you'll be sort of shown some recommend, recommended products. And we alloy actually means a fusion of elements for strength and protection from corrosion. It's from um, metal. It's like a mix of, you know, two metals makes a, makes the, a stronger metal. So we really do believe in hormones as well as you know probiotics and mm -hmm. a really a holistic approach to and we will be rolling out other products that are not just um, prescription medications but we did actually once we started digging monica and i just thought okay let's do a a, a menopause website and we really didn't know what we were going to do in fact i actually was yeah. like well we can't sell hormones they cause breast cancer right this was three four years ago trust me my, my mom you know my mom obviously had an estrogen based breast cancer and i was petrified of hormones i it, it wouldn't it would be the furthest thing from my mind that I'm on anywhere talking about them. It's yeah, yeah because it's it was really all ingrained in our how minds. We're all so sort of you know honestly held hostage by that study 20 years ago. I feel, um, mm -hmm. but so but the more we did, we, we sort of thought we were going to sell you know natural herbal supplements right. and maybe some do some content and that was it. But the more we looked into it and the more we researched what. I sort of, you know, from my journalist background, was like, wait, why do we have this? Why do I have this feeling that there's something bad out there? And yeah. we dug and dug and dug and realized that this study came out 20 years ago that sort of put us a lot on the wrong course. And also, we just realized that if you're not talking to women at this age about hormones, you're just doing them mm -hmm. a disservice. So mm -hmm. we do sell estrogen and progesterone in cream and pill and patch form, but we are also selling um, a symbiotic, which is a prebiotic plus a probiotic to help your microbiome yeah. because having a diverse microbiome or gut, as it's more likely known, um, is really also key to healthy aging. Um, and we'll be rolling out some other services and products because we really feel like this is a whole ecosystem. Um, but so the fact is you've finished this assessment, we give you recommendations, a, a menopause trained doctor goes through the, your assessment and your history, approves your prescription or your whatever you've um, sort of selected from your recommendations. And then you get sent a package um, of your medications, a note from us, a little welcome package. Um, and we continue to be available to you for um, unlimited messaging with your doctor if you have questions, as we all do. Um, and so it's we really, for a year, I mean, it, you can cancel at any time, but for a year, which is the sort of what the average length of our prescriptions are, um, mm -hmm. we have, and women, by the way, stay on this for years and years and years, but we're only, we've only been around for a year. So, um, but we're available to you with that texting mechanism where you can just ask in the middle of the night on your own time, um, what's going on? Why do I feel this way or that way? And that's another thing about this whole thing is, it was started because Monica went through early surgical menopause. She had her ovaries mm -hmm. removed when she was 40. Mm -hmm. And she really kind of made it her full-time job to figure out how to treat her menopause symptoms. And wow. none of us need another full-time job at this age. So <laughs> we really felt <laughs> felt compelled yeah, well. to make it easy to access us at any time, um, which is why we were doing the text-based messaging. I love it. So that's um, what it is. Yeah, and I, th I think that just the accessibility is also so important too for not only the the solutions that you have, but also the information that you have. Because at this point, it's just going to take a long time. I think, I, and I don't even know if they did another study tomorrow that you know Dr. Malone was saying it's not even going to affect the women that are going through menopause today. And I think right. that you know, to obviously bad news spreads a lot faster than good news does. We know that um, just from just from you know what we've done for so many years and i think it's going to take a long time to you know turn that message around but i love the fact that you're doing that alongside providing those solutions cuz you know i think that that's what it is at the end of the day thanks and you know really as dr malone was saying it's it's also about doctors getting reeducated i mean this mm -hmm. is this is I a know, really I know. we were shocked to find out there are, first of all only 18,000 obgyns in the country which is you know there are 55 million women in our demo alone so forget about I all I feel the like I know all of babies. them at this point I feel like I've <laughs> exactly. interviewed them <laughs> Yeah. Or I went to visit um, them for, you for solutions and answers. There are only 1,000 who are menopause experts. Only I, I might have interviewed a, a large percentage of those. Yes. <laughs> so 1,000 doctors who know about this and 55 million women. Clearly the math is Isn't that important. incredible that you can even... using the technology to spread the expertise and, and grant, democratize access really to this, sure. this expertise so that more women can start feeling better sooner. What do you think needs to happen next next steps inside the workplace? Because that's something where, uh, you know, I know that we, we focus on and we talk about. I don't know how easy that is to do, but I guess it's uh, more of the awareness that we're creating right now is going to affect those changes. I mean, of course, talking about it is the first thing. And, and as you were saying, you're afraid of your boss hearing you talk about menopause and what he, he or she might think. Um, and we have to just the more normalized we make the conversation, the better. I remember when yeah. it was 
you know, sort of still taboo to talk about breastfeeding in the office. And that yeah. really turned around and, now, and changed. Um, right. My bosses are great about it, which is, is encouraging to me because I think like, wow, I work at a media company and they're great about me talking about women's health. Uh, that's a really good thing. That's an amazing, I think that's an amazing thing. And I don't think that's where we would have been three years ago. I don't even no, just three, I think three short years ago. You're doing such an amazing job spreading the word. And, you know, when you think about the fact that there's been so much, ever, wonderfully so, um, talk about fertility in the workplace and even, yeah. you know, companies that might help you freeze your eggs or, you know, and certainly have much more open to breastfeeding possibilities. And, and there's just a, it's a much more sort of accepted conversation about all around maternity in the workplace. And if you think about that, it's not actually universal to all women and menopause is 100% of women. And so in some ways it would even be more um, egalitarian for workplaces to talk about menopause because it affects every single one of their employees with ovaries.